The human body is a wonder itself. Trillions of cells make up a single human body to keep your heart beating, your legs moving, and you conscious. Despite being amazing, the human body isn't invincible. Nearly everything is dangerous to your body and its cycle. Your brain could shut down and your heart and lungs could cease functioning. So what protects two of the many essential organs of your body, the heart and lungs? If you didn't already know, it's the rib cage. The rib cage is an arrangement of bones located in the thoracic region between the neck and abdomen of the axial skeleton. The axial skeleton consists of the body parts such as the skull, spine, or the ribs. The purpose of this rib cage is to protect internal organs. It consists of 20 ribs, not counting the floating ribs, which are ribs that are not connected to the sternum. Contained within the bones is bone marrow, a soft, fatty material in the interior of the bones. Bone marrow consists of mainly hematopoietic tissue, which is red color tissue, and yellow marrow, which is mainly made up of fat cells. The rib cage has an equal amount of ribs on each side. The superior, or the upper part of the ribs, are attached to the spine in the back, and the sternum in the front. The inferior, or the lower parts of the ribs, are not directly attached to the sternum. However, they are attached to the spine. The ribs are also not solid in place. They are flexible and expandable to accommodate for the beating of the heart and the expansion of the lungs for effective breathing. The ribs also resemble the shape of a cage so that it protects the vital organs, such as the heart, lungs, and blood vessels. There are also work being done within the ribs. There are different types of cells to help repair bones. Let's suppose you have a fracture in your bone. The osteocytes communicate changes in the bone to the osteoclasts, osteoblasts, and osteogenic cells, such as a case where there's a fracture. Osteoblasts produces a toughened area of skin, called a callus, that attaches to the dead bone at the injury site, which repairs the fracture. Another type of bone repair cell is called osteoclast, absorbs bone tissue during a period of healing and growth. Finally, osteogenic cells are cells in the inner layer of the periosteum, a layer of tissue surrounding the bones. They can, in case of an injury, transform and turn into osteoblasts, which are responsible for forming new bones. We decided to show our learning about the ribcage by creating a model of it. This project incorporated not only art and science, but engineering technology and mathematics as well. For our project, we were assigned to build a human bone structure, but it's not as simple as that. We had to replicate some of the bone structures included in an actual bone, such as bone marrow or tissue. This project helped us learn not just what a bone structure is, but its function. The model of the bones we had to make had to do one or more of the following. It had to move in some sort of way. It had to be able to hold the weight of a textbook or a book of equal weight. It had to also be able to protect something soft like the organs or marrow. We started this process by looking at possible materials and strategies for building the bone. Then we began sketching out a model of the ribcage we were going to construct. Originally, we planned to make the ribs out of wire and clay, and the spine and sternum out of PVC piping, but that proved to be a bit out of reach, as wire didn't seem strong enough, and baked clay seemed too stiff for movement, so we decided to make the entire thing out of PVC piping. We chose PVC piping because it was much more similar to bone than metal wire hangers, and clay in terms of structure, and much stronger. We also chose it because it represented compact bone very well, as it is strong and rigid, yet flexible. The process involves taking a heat gun, which is a souped up hairdryer, able to output 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat gun softens the pipe by exciting the molecules, making them vibrate, and setting them free from a solid structure, allowing the PVC to bend. Then we bend it, and tape it to other PVC pipes that represent the sternum and the spine. The rib cage is technically made up of 12 ribs, with 7 true ribs which connect directly to the sternum. Three false ribs, which do not connect directly with the sternum, but are connected to it by cartilage. And two floating ribs, that do not connect with the sternum at all. Known as floating ribs. Like actual bone, the material we chose is fairly light and flexible, yet strong, and will resist stretching and twisting. Our material is also hollow, so it can be filled with foam, which will represent bone marrow. 
when we constructed our ribs, we decided to increase the size of each rib by about 2 inches each, which proved to use up a large amount of our materials, and made the ribs look disproportionate to a human body. If we were to redo the project, we would change the mathematical proportions of each rib. We weren't able to bond the ribs to the spine and sternum, as the materials we chose were unable to melt enough to combine the ribs with the spine and sternum. We also weren't able to perfectly make the model look like a real rib cage, as the bone has different shaped structures, which we weren't able to replicate using PVC piping. It was also difficult to incorporate bone marrow into our ribs because it was curved, making it difficult for us to insert the solid material. However, we did find liquid foam, which we could pour in and let it dry into foam. We only did it for one separate rib, as it wouldn't be able to be seen on the rib cage. Our rib cage was successful in protecting something soft and holding up textbooks. It was able to support three, possibly more, physiology textbooks while protecting the balloons inside. As stated earlier, the human body is a wonder itself, the bone structure of which provides the entire body the same ability to be that wonder and to do the things that we do. In combination with other systems in the body, the bones are literally the backbones of the human body. In the end, this ended up being as a collaborative STEAM project as we incorporated engineering as a parallel to anatomy and physiology, helping us learn, form, and function. To reinstate the point of this project was not to just read about the bones, but to actually appreciate and understand the function and structures of our bones, how to appreciate all the little intricacies of the human body.